This is a G83 Pectrilene can cycle, the king of can cycles. Now, a can cycle in CNC programming is a simple way of accomplishing repetitive tasks like drilling, tapping, and boring. Look, if we had a craving for some baked beans, we could find a recipe and then make a trip down to the store for all of the individual ingredients and then slice, dice, and saute things up from scratch. But for everyday meals, we can't spend that kind of time. Instead, we're gonna choose efficiency and reach for a canned solution. If we need to program a single hole, we could program that longhand using just feed and rapid moves, uh, G01s and G0s. But it's never just one hole. Most parts have lots of different holes and we do this kind of drilling every day. So it's better to reach for a pre-canned, pre-cooked solution that is easy to use. Now, can cycles make us machinists look smart. With a single line of code, they can make any home cook look like a five-star chef. Here is that one line of code. G83 activates our PEC cycle. F15 sets our feed to 15, in this case, 15 inches a minute. In metric mode, our feed is usually in millimeters per minute. Q.125 commands our drill bit to come back up for air after every 0.125 inch axial feed move. This is to clear chips and to, to feed coolant into the hole. This is called a PEC. PEC start from where our drill started, where it was at before we called the G83, our rapid or clearance plane, not from the top of our part necessarily. It will keep pecking until we reach our final Z depth, Z minus two inches in this example. The best part about a can cycle is that if we need to drill more holes, all we need to do is command a new X or Y position, and the control remembers exactly what to do. This is what makes a can cycle a can cycle. The control's ability to run that active cycle at each new X, Y location until the cycle is canceled with either a G0, a G1, or a G80. Now, a G80's sole purpose in life is to cancel can cycles. But if I'm programming, especially by hand, uh, I might program a G0, Z 2.0 move. This G0 rapid move will move the tool up and out of the way at the end of the cycle, but it has the secondary effect of canceling that can cycle so it doesn't continue to drill holes at each and every new location. For a newer machinist, that is it. That is how this king of can cycles works. We've covered the basics. Now, we've covered how to set up your tools in other videos. We've also created a video on the essential nine lines of writing a program. And you can drop this G83 can cycle right into that nine line example that we gave you in the other video. We've linked to those videos in the description. It's now time for you to go and practice. Uh, find yourself a mentor, a machine, do some setups, get programming with your G83 CAN cycle, and then it's time to move on to a CAM system for the more advanced parts. We showed you the simplified G83, and that is what we use most of the time when we make parts. But there are far more advanced features that go along with this cycle, and we're gonna look at those right now. Variables that help us decrease cycle time remove chips, extend tool life, and increase accuracy. This is the full list of variables available to us with this CAN cycle. Many of them so cool they have their own videos. An E can help us reverse the tool between holes, tossing stringy chips out of our way. F is our feed rate in millimeters or inches per minute by default. Using IJK PECs can shorten our cycle times and extend our tool life. We have a video on these powerful time-saving variables, which we highly recommend. Again, links in the description. Using an L value on one of our can cycle lines will cause that line to repeat. Uh, L2, L3 would cause that hole to repeat two or three times. That's typically only used when in G91 incremental mode. Advanced topic for later. What we use all the time though is an L0. An L0 will cause that line of code to be skipped, not executed. This is great 
when we don't want to drill a certain hole for some reason. We want that hole skipped, we add an L0 to that line of code in the program. We can dwell at the bottom of a hole by adding a P value to our G83. We mentioned our QPEX earlier. Our QPEX usually start where our drill started, just above our part, not necessarily at Z0. Commanding a larger Q value, even bigger than the Z depth of a hole, will just cause the drill to go all the way to the bottom of the hole in one peck, essentially making our G83 code behave like a G81 non-pecking cycle. An R value can set a unique rapid plane for our cycle, helping us avoid wasted time spent cutting air. We made a video that explains rapid planes and how our use of G98 and G99 codes can change the way our CAN cycles behave between and at each hole. Check out the video. We've had these 13 cans on the table for this entire video, and this is it. These are all of the milled can cycles available to us, and they all behave in a similar fashion to our G83 can cycle. We have four drilling can cycles. We have five boring can cycles. We have two tapping cycles, one mill broaching can cycle, and one G66 modal macro call, which I am calling a can cycle because it has that same behavior where it runs a, a bit of code at each XY location that it comes to until we tell it to stop. Well, we've got videos on almost all of these CAN cycles and we've linked to them in the description, so check those out. That's it. Thanks for letting us be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.